Hi, I'm Bob Warfield from CNC Cookbook. In this video, I want to speak to beginners and hobbyists about how they can get conservative feeds and speeds, and also about the most common problems you'll face with feeds and speeds. I'm going to start by just saying it. Feeds and speeds are hard. We surveyed our, our audience of CNCers about what the hardest things to learn in CNC were, and the answer, by a wide margin, was feeds and speeds. The good news is we're here to help. You've already got a big part of that help in your hands with G-Wizard, but let's take a deeper look at what you'll need to focus on. Feeds and speeds are hard, but they're particularly difficult for beginners and hobbyists. The thing is, you're working with smaller machines in most cases. And frankly, these machines have a lot less tolerance for error than big industrial CNC machines. Of course, the big machines can get you into a lot bigger troubles. So there's a bit of a trade-off there. Also, you haven't mastered the various CNC skills yet. Right? I mean, the better you know how to hold down your work, how to aim the coolant or mist, how to do various other things, the closer to the edge of the envelope you can run without having a problem. And that's really the thing. The pros want to get close to the edge of the envelope. But for beginners, you want to do just the opposite. You want to keep back from the edge in order to increase your margin for errors. I'm going to talk to you about two ways to increase your margin for error to ensure your, your success. First, I'll show you G-Wizard Safe Mode. It's a wonderful tool to get you started, and when you feel you've mastered CNC under Safe Mode, you can take the training wheels off and pick up speed. Second, I'm going to take you through the most common feeds and speeds related problems that beginners face, and I'm going to show you how to conquer them. So let's dive in. What is safe mode? Safe mode is a one-click way for you to get much more conservative speeds and feeds from G-Wizard. It's just a checkbox on the machine profile here. We're in our machine profile wizard, which you get by clicking the edit button on the setup screen. And uh, as it says, safe mode gives you extra conservative feeds and speeds for beginners and smaller CNC machines. Okay, turn the safe mode on, save the machine profile, and you've now got a machine profile that's going to give you less cut width, less cut depth, slower RPM, slower feeds, and it's going to make a number of other adjustments that reduce your risk. Okay, let's see a demo of how safe mode works. Here's G-Wizard. I want to go to CAD CAM Wizards for this demo because that's where safe mode operates. So here we are in the CAD CAM Wizards. And I've got G Wizards set up to use a little Shape Oco router here, a little CNC router. These are great little machines for beginners and hobbyists, by the way. I've got one. Uh, but they're pretty lightweight. Safe mode is a natural to use with one until you've got your skills honed. Okay. So let's just go ahead and we're going to do a pocket here with these default settings, a quarter inch depth, quarter inch minimum corner radius. Let's forget the chamfer. Let's just let's just do quick and easy. So we click recalc and it comes back. OK. And you've got everything you need here. You've got a roughing pass. You've got a finish pass. Uh, it's picked the right tool for you to use. Uh, your cut depth and cut width are all figured out. You've got your RPMs and your feed rate. All is good here, and it's telling you there's no problems. Everything looks good, right? So let's take note real quick. Uh, this roughing pass is going to take about 30 seconds to run. Okay? So let's turn on safe mode so we can compare. I'm going to go over here to setup, right? And as you can see, Safe mode is this little checkbox down here. It's part of the machine profile. So it runs with the profile. You don't turn it on and off for all the machines. 
uh, you turn it on for a particular machine uh, that you want to use it for. Okay, and you can turn it on with this little checkbox, or you can bring up our machine profile wizard here, and it's also got a safe mode, but the wizard tells you a lot more information, gives you a lot more help uh, to make this all work out. Okay, and as it says here, safe mode gives you an extra conservative feeds and speeds for beginners and smaller CNC machines. Okay, so let's save that. Right, we've got safe mode checked here. And let's go ahead and uh, save that machine profile. You don't want to forget to do that. Okay, we're back here in CAD CAM Wizards, and you can see it's telling us right here that we have safe mode turned on. So let's rerun our uh, pocket with the defaults and see how we do. Okay, so several things have changed. First, we have a much less aggressive cut width over here. Uh, second, it's going to take longer to cut in safe mode. This is going to be over a minute. It's a minute and 16 seconds versus 30 odd seconds uh, when maximally uh, running without safe mode. And that's normal. Safe mode's all about being more conservative, giving you some extra margin for error. I recommend beginners start with safe mode turned on, uh, particularly if you have a lighter weight machine. Uh, get through a few projects, get comfortable with it, hone your skills, then try turning it off when you feel like you've got a decent grasp of your CNC skills and you're ready for more performance. Um, that'll get you through the tough starting stages uh, without any problems. Okay? All right. Let's put G-Wizard away. Go back over here. And now I want to talk to you about some common problems that beginners have. Okay, I've talked to literally thousands of CNCers who contact me and say, I just broke a tool, what am I doing wrong? Or, you know, often I just broke a tool because G-Wizard is giving me bad feeds and speeds. Here's the thing. I always work through it with these folks to try to get to the bottom of what's happening. And in the end of the day, these four areas are by far the most common sources of problems. Inadequate chip clearing, not providing lubrication when cutting aluminum, the tool pulls out, or the tool has excessive runout. The thing that people don't really realize is good feeds and speeds can't fix everything. Uh, some of these conditions can be so bad that there is no feed and speed where you're not going to break the tool. So you've got to master just a few skills as well as having the best feeds and speeds. So let's go through the list and talk about these. They're not hard. They're just not things most beginners are going to think of right at the outset. Okay? Inadequate chip clearing. So, you know, the truth is most people don't even think about this, and that's why it becomes a problem. The thing is, cutters really hate to recut chips. It interferes with their ability to remove new chips, and if things get clogged up enough, the cutter's flutes are going to be jammed with chips you can't get rid of, and pretty soon that cutter will break. But even before it gets that bad, recutting chips dramatically increases tool wear. Too many chips will actually put chips into the cutter's sharp edges and make it dull sooner. This picture is actually from a Canadian metalworking article on the need to get the chips cleared out. And this is a this is a big old industrial cutter. It's it's kind of down in a hole. And that's when, where the trouble starts. When your cutter's down in a hole and starts to accumulate uh, too many chips, you got to make sure you're getting them out of there with either an air blast, a vacuum in a lot of cases with routers, some sort of mist or coolant. You've got to aim that stuff carefully. And again, the deeper down your cutter is, the harder it is to get it aimed properly so that the chips really are going out of there. Uh, if the bottom of the cut is a tight canyon and it looks like you're Luke Skywalker trying to fly down and kill the Death Star, that's high risk. you got to get down in there and blast those chips out and slow down cuts also in that area. Safe mode will automatically reduce cut depths to reduce this kind of risk. So keep that in mind. Try to cultivate the habit of being paranoid about clearing chips. If you see them building up, try to take some steps to fix that. Okay, now 
Another huge cause of problems is a failure to provide lubrication for aluminum. You wind up with cutters that look like this with these taffy-like streamers glued to the cutter. And it's very frustrating because it doesn't take long when this starts happening to wind up breaking your cutter. Here's the thing. Aluminum actually has a chemical affinity for the materials your cutter is made out of. It wants chips, aluminum chips, want to weld onto your cutter. And when they do, that cutter is going to break pretty soon thereafter. That's why you have to provide lubrication. That's what prevents it. If you're cutting dry with just vacuum or compressed air, there's no lubrication there. You need flood coolant, a mist, or even hand spritzing WD-40 onto that cutter all the way down to the bottom of the tip of the tool in order to prevent those chips welding. And the thing is, if you're cutting a slot or you're deep down again, not only are the chips hard to get out, it's hard to get the lubricant down there on the cutter where it needs to be. Now, we've all seen people cutting aluminum without uh, using any kind of lubricant and not having a problem. The deal is they're on borrowed time. They may be able to get those chips out of there before they have a chance to, will, to weld onto the cutter with enough compressed air or a strong enough vacuum or whatever. They may be cutting super shallow to make it even easier to get rid of the chips, but sooner or later, if you cut deep enough, you're going to have a chip welding problem. So think about how you can get some lubrication in there. Like I said, even hand spritzing WD-40 can help tremendously. Okay, here's another problem that comes up a lot with beginners, and especially on certain machines, and that's tool pullout. This happens potentially anytime your tool is in some kind of a collet. So whether that's an ER collet chuck, uh, router spindles often use collets, or the Tormach TTS tooling system, all of those tool holding systems involve collets. And the way you know if you've had tool pullout uh, assuming the tool is still intact, is you recheck the tool's length from where it goes into the tool holder to the tip. And if that's changed, you're experiencing tool pullout. Uh, there are a number of different uh, things you want to look at in order to prevent it. And uh, if you follow all of these procedures carefully, you shouldn't have much problem with tool pullout. Start with proper tightening of the collets. I saw one of the YouTube CNC stars out there cautioning against getting collets too tight, and it just made me wince. Yes, you can create a problem over tightening collets, but it is so much more common among beginners not to tighten them enough, especially since most collet wrenches have very short handles. If you want to be sure you're getting these things right, get yourself a collet wrench adapter for your torque wrench and torque them to spec. There are charts on the internet, charts on CNC cookbook. They'll tell you exactly how much force should be used to tighten the collet. And it's a lot more torque than most people realize. The bigger the collet, the more torque you need. Once you get a feel from the torque wrench for what's required, you know, it'll become second nature to you and you can quit worrying about it so much. But this is very important. The second thing to avoid the pullout is keep your tooling, your collets, and your collet chucks very clean. Grease, coolant, and chips can all cause problems, but especially they can lead to pullout. Keep them squeaky clean when you assemble them. I use brake cleaner spray to degrease and lots of compressed air to make sure there's no chips. If you're running Tormox TTS system, be sure to adjust your machine properly and do so frequently enough every couple of months when I adjust my Tormach frequently like that, every few months, I never have TTS pull out. But if I get lazy and skip it for, say, six months, I start having problems. That brings me to my next point. Reduce your cutting forces, and you'll reduce the likelihood of pullouts. I have two machine profiles I use with the Tormach. One has a power limit of one horsepower, which is much less than the machine's actual power. What that lets me do is be a little bit lazy if I not don't take total care in the adjustments and the cleanliness of the various parts. I seldom ever have a pullout problem if I cut back to one horsepower on my profile. But if I want to get the job done faster, 
I go ahead and take more care with my setups and my, and my machine adjustments, and it takes care of it. The other thing is safe mode is going to reduce your cutting forces and help prevent tool pullout just automatically. Okay, another one we want to look at is tool runout. This is a sneaky one. Basically, runout happens whenever the tool doesn't spin true to the spindle's axis. The tool could be spinning because the hole it's in is slightly off center, and I mean the hole in the collet, uh, or the tool could be cocked at a slight angle, which makes it wobble. The thing is, the amount we're talking about is tiny, tiny, tiny. You cannot see this kind of run out with the naked eye. If you see the tool wobbling with the naked eye, you got something a lot worse than typical run out going on. I remember I had one day where I broke three end mills in a row because I had a defective collet that had about two thousandths of an inch in run out. It was a brand new name brand collet, but it was defective from the start. So if you start breaking tools and you can't and you've tried all these other things to prevent it, take a look at your collets at your tools run out. And this is how you measure it right here. You put a you put a dial test indicator against the smooth part of the tool and rotate smoothly and this needle shouldn't be moving around very much it ought to pretty much stick to where you zeroed it uh, if it's moving around much at all you may have a pullout problem and the way you can see how much pullout is too much is you use this chart this gives you tool life versus total indicated run out as a percentage of your tools chip load right and the smaller the tool, the less chip load, so the more sensitive it is going to be to these runout problems. A 1 8 inch end mill might only allow a thousandth of an inch in chip load. So a thousandth of an inch of runout is just like doubling the chip size for that cutter. That's like doubling the feed rate. No wonder you're going to be breaking end mills if you have that kind of runout. So keep that in mind. That's sort of the last thing I check if I'm having problems and these other things are not the reason take a look at the runout, get your dial test indicator and have a look at it. If you discover you have a problem, replace the collet, then the tool holder, and if that still doesn't work, you likely have some spindle issues to dive into and try to figure out. Here's the thing. With the information in this video and the G-Wizard software, you've got this. You can use your safe mode to increase your margin for error. You know to be paranoid about your chip clearing you know aluminum needs some lubrication. You know what you need to do to avoid tool pullout, and you know how to check for the runout if all else fails. So, like I say, you've got this. You're ready to go. You've got the basic skills and the tools. Um, thanks for watching the video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get many more great CNC videos. Happy CNCing!